to talk about Mr. Raf Simmons. Raf Simmons deciding to close down his brand after 27 years. 27 years. Absolutely crazy. Um, it kind of came out the blue, it felt like, uh, because I just remember the other day he did a massive show at Printworks here in London. I remember a lot of people on my timeline were showing pictures of themselves at the show. It looked pretty cool. But I just remember thinking, wow, man, imagine the amount of money they spent to flipping hire Printworks and get that done. Because imagine that's not a cheap place to hire, even for a fashion show in the middle of the week or something. It's not something that's going to, you know, be a hundred quid or something on this side. It's not going to be a thousand, maybe a couple more zeros on there. So to do a big show like that, especially you know i think it was a show that they were meant to do prior if i'm not mistaken and i put a queen down if i think so around that kind of so like a rescheduled show but still for a rest to do a show in london randomly um would cost a lot of money and would probably you know be the indication that your brand's doing pretty okay if you're kind of flying around and doing all these kind of on-site or kind of foreign destination shows or maybe it isn't because i felt like particular Veneta did the same thing right when they did a show in burka and then soon after daniel lee got fired so maybe it's kind of like a bit of a curse in fashion when you do these like location um collections or the, these sorry these location shows like how dior did recently the show in, in cairo and egypt maybe it's a bit of a it's a bit of a bad omen to do those shows because soon after you're gonna end up kind of shutting down but this came out of the blue for me personally because i always felt like you know raf simmons has that weird thing where again it's a thing it's a brand that you don't really see a lot of people wearing out in real life but it has a lot of cool cachet behind it um, it'll be as he has a deep history in the fashion industry especially when it comes to men's it's in you know it's probably just set the trends and set the silhouettes for many 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 years especially post you'd say maybe margella and i felt like maybe with the amount of people you see wearing on social media maybe more archive pieces the fact they don't see people wearing it in real life it had this weird kind of draw where i felt like Ras simmons for the most part got away with maybe murder i felt like a little bit because i felt like towards the end the designs weren't as interesting as when he first started. I felt like before he was really, really, you know, pushing boundaries and setting trends every single collection. Sometimes very subtly. Sometimes it'd be, you know, again, the Riot collection everyone kind of knows. And then it would be something very, very subtle where there'd be a lot of kind of monotones. There'd be very little branding. There'd be very little quote unquote streetwear. It would be all tailoring. The shapes and silhouettes would be amazing. And you just flip it again to something. And there was loads of kind of real kind of, um, really interesting ways of really presenting and showcasing masculinity but then i feel like over time it got a little bit repetitive especially recently and maybe the good indication of it being repetitive is i didn't really see as many people wearing the newer stuff as i saw wearing the old stuff so it kind of was a clear indication similar to bad example but bear with me similar to what happened to bape i feel like bape towards the end especially when it took over no one was wearing the new version of Bape. Everyone was wearing stuff from prior, like I did, right? Like old snowboarding jackets, old M65s, old jeans, old wallabies, old denim jackets, old, you know, um, plaid shirts. That was what they were wearing, or multi camo shirts and stuff. But they were always wearing stuff that's happened, that was kind of being made under the IT tenure. Now, I don't know what happened. Again, I'm, I'm always curious with this stuff because I think m maybe Raph Simmons hasn't had the drop off as drastic as flipping Ricardo Tishi at Givenchy. Or we kind of teach you sorry at uh, Burberry but I'm really curious to find out as to what happens I'm, I'm sure people in the industry would know more so who are really close to this stuff but what really happens when a supremely talented designer who at one point was doing amazing suddenly turns into you know something not amazing like you know the stuff that you know Ricardo Tucci was putting out of Burberry was legitimately offensive to his own legacy not to us to us it was maybe offensive to our eyes we could just close our eyes but to his own legacy considering how amazing he is he should never be you know standing next to that and be proud of that that stuff was terrible it was garbage and I was like it's impossible how somebody so talented can produce something so terrible I didn't understand how that could happen and Maybe Raf Simmons wasn't drastic fall off, but I did feel like recently the stuff wasn't as great. So maybe it's not that great of a surprise, but maybe off the, but still off the back of that print work show, it still felt like it came out of the blue. So, you know, I'm going to read a bit of this article here with um, Vogue that kind of uh, describes a bit more in detail. It says here, Raf Simmons stunned the industry today when he announced his namesake label, uh, official to Instagram account, that the spring 2023 collection would be his final season. The show staged during London's Freeze Art Fair turned into a rave after the last model took their turn on the catwalk. Amazing. Simmons launched his brand in 1995 after working as a furniture designer and interning at the fellow Belgian Walter Van Beerdocks design studio. It's incredible, right? Two people who absolutely hated Virgil. Uh, Walter Van Beerdock and Raf Simmons. <laughs> the collection's funny. And they're also Belgian. 
if you know anything about the history of Belgium, Belgium and flipping Africa and especially Congo, you know well go on. It's interesting. <laughs> He quickly achieved cult status for youth-oriented collections um, that showcased his innate ability to distill inspiration from the underground art and music world into the um, eminently recognizable min minimalist silhouettes. That's one thing I've just definitely given credit for. Um, I was very late on the Raph Simmons wave because I guess when I came into fashion and got my interest in kind of you know wearing clothes and stuff, which is weird because my introduction to fashion was like this guy called uh, Matthew Williamson who was an English designer who actually went to St. Martin's, the same college that I went to. And I remember reading about him before I went there and kind of went being like, oh yeah, that's the place I'm going to go to. I was like, oh shit. And I was kind of really into kind of following his sort of career in the early days of reading kind of British Vogue and whatnot. And then I remember obviously my introduction to fashion was sort of like mostly streetwear. So I kind of got into it via the kind of Comme des Garçons, Jun Junior Watanabe sort of field and, you know, um, undercover with flipping um, Jun Takahashi. And then that kind of introduced me to the fashion stuff. But I remember liking all the stuff from like Fragment early on, like maybe even Good Enough Times and whatnot, Neighborhood, and seeing all the bomber shapes and whatnot and be like, oh, I love this stuff. And then when I suddenly stumbled across Raph, I was like, oh, this is where it all came from. These silhouettes, these kind of like, you know, exaggerated shapes on the bombers, these t-shirt lamps, the graphics, it all came from him. He kind of set the template and the kind of, you know, um, the tempo and that sort of stuff. And obviously Street with decided to be able to take that and distill it in their own sort of way. But that was kind of my introduction. So I was never really fully into it. But if I, was, if I really was into it, it was mostly the archive stuff. All the stuff that you see all of these kind of, um, you know, uh, archivists, I guess you'd call them on social media that buy them stuff. I think there's a really famous guy, David something, who kind of, you know, sells people really limp, really rare Raf Simon piece. I think he was a person that may or may not have sold the Riot Bomber to Drake. Or is that story, did he sell it to Drake or did he get stolen? No, I think he sold it to Drake. I think he's the one that sold it to Drake or something like that. So he's a really kind of cool and um, really knowledgeable when it comes to all things considering Raf and yeah, all that stuff was really inspiring, but I, I remember just being more of a, let's say, of a Comme de Garçons person than I was of a Raph Simmons person. I didn't really get, I got into Raph Simmons kind of quote unquote late. I maybe was more into Margiela, Raph Simmons, sorry, Margiela Com, and then I got into Raph towards the end. And then by the time I did get into him, because I was already obsessed with streetwear, I kind of just saw it as a bit reductive of what I was already wearing in streetwear. And really, he was the guy setting the trend. So it's really funny to see that kind of come full circle. Continues. His spring collection featured works by the late artist Philippe Vandenberg, and though he didn't know that at the time, they proved prophetic. Um, he said the following: "Cruel, they, their cruel words like kill them all, them. Their cruel words like kill them all and dance." But he didn't mean killing people. The designer told Sarah Moa at the time he meant killing things that are doing creatively in order to move on and exploit and explore further. He meant killing things that you are doing creatively in order to move on and explore further. In his Instagram post, Simmons wrote, I like the words to share how proud I am of all that we have achieved. I'm grateful for the incredible support from my team, from my collaborators, from my press, from buyers, from my friends and my family, from our devoted fans and loyal followers. Thank you all for believing in our vision and for believing in me. Reach for comment. P Simmons PR said that no on Instagram would be the only official communication about his move. <laughs> I love how press shy and reluctant he is to talk in general while explaining himself. It's absolutely amazing. Sometimes you just, you know, go on for ages on live streams or whatnot, sitting next to Michelle Proud, and sometimes you just give you the cold shoulder and keep it moving. Love it. At the top of his post, he included the year 1995 when his label was debuted and the names of his parents, Alda and Jax, and Jax the same name as Travis Scott. Um, more, crypt more cryptic are the phrases memory wear, likely a reference to his spring 2015 collection whose clothes featured a collage of items from his childhood, a kit in a roller coaster and astronaut, as well as images of his parents when they were dating and a station to station, a 1976 David Bowie album and the song that featured prominently in a movie, Christine F or Christian F. Yeah, that collection of Christian F was... Ugh. That was one. Of, that was one of the harder recent ones, actually. That collection inspired Christian. I think that was the one with the Parker that had drugs that you could kind of turn inside out, and all the all the models were walking on tables with like these flowers and bottles. Oh, a favorite designer of 2019. Bowie had been, long been a touchstone for Simmons. Um, there were there were tea screen printed with the images of Aladdin Sane and his first collection, and his debut at Calvin Klein opened with Bowie's track "This Is Not America." The next time we'll see Simmons will be in January at Prada's menswear show in Milan. Um, he has been co-creative director of the label since early 2020. So obviously there's an official communication there, um, which in a weird way looks really chic. Isn't it? Even though it's just black and white, 
it just looks really chic i know it's not much and it's just standard font that you'd get on any kind of laptop or whatnot but there's something about that, that you could print on a t-shirt and that would look absolutely amazing also but yeah big up raf simmons um I, i'm curious i'm curious really really curious i know this is a bit of a stretch i understand this is a stretch i get it i know some of you will not like this but i wonder if he kind of knew and maybe this was the reason why he was a bit spicy when he said what he said about Virgil back then. You remember when he went through that whole thing and he was kind of, you know, basically throwing some bars and being a bit mean to Virgil and being a bit of a C-U-N-T. I wonder if back then he knew because fashion, I don't think there's any surprises, especially in-house. I think there's always people are aware of what's going on and the changing sea change and the nature of things. And I, I'm assuming if you're a certain caliber of person, you definitely see the attention that you used to get maybe being given to other people that maybe you feel like aren't as talented as you but you definitely feel, you definitely can be aware and you're kind of sensitive to things going around you so i wonder if back when what was this this must have been 2017 when raf said um he wasn't inspired or excited by Virgil's designs when he did that interview but he called him a sweet guy which is the legitimate worst compliment you'd ever like to get from somebody who looked at as a design hero i wonder if back then he was already noticing and seeing how things were changing in industry and you're seeing that things were going in a direction where the things that he was lauded for in terms of his education in terms of his experience in terms of his references in terms of his craft in terms of his um, craftsmanship in terms of his ability to pattern cut and all this kind of stuff and tailoring i wonder if maybe he kind of saw that now it turned it into a thing where brands were looking for creative directors who could legitimately revamp the brand from top to bottom from the way the stores were laid out to how the sh sh shows were presented to who sat on the front row to who was you know maybe getting seated or sent products aware in certain places how they presented their shows digitally social media all this sort of stuff we kind of see it saw it change and it made them a little bit um what you say bitter and a little bit um resentful of things that were moving differently and maybe he was you know imagine you're raf simmons and now so, so suddenly in flipping meetings you're now being requested to open a tiktok account and stuff and post stuff on social media do instagram lives you're like what and now you're noticing the reason why they're asking that is because now these new customers you know they want more from their designers they want more from their brands they don't just want like you know clothes presented on fashion week and with some notes and some buys and some weepy waves and the end of the show they want you to communicate and be you know in their face or whatnot and answering questions all this sort of stuff i wonder if that was a thing that happened because i did think it was really strange that he said what he said because i'm th th this is a quote taken from this car article in 2017 and this is a quote thing for the gq style magazine interview and the interviewer asked raf simmons the following it's funny because there's like four lines here and he just says one word he says the following the question there are some designers now and i'm thinking of virgin abler off-white demner demner vetma gosha virginsky jesus christ man demner and gosha definitely got bad reps now who are connecting with the youth through fashion in a new way are there any young designers say that inspire or excite you yes <laughs> you heard the name virgin it's like, and it continues anyone in particular not off-white <laughs> Which is funny because I think at the time that he did Off White, I always said, weirdly enough, when he was doing it, I felt like the women's was way better than the men's. And I know that came soon, like that came much later, because I think for them when he first presented it was mostly men's. But I felt like Off White necessarily, it, it kind of felt a little bit all over the place. But maybe that's because he was trying to find his feet early Off White. But I still felt like there was an, clearly an idea of building a fashion house. He wasn't just trying to do a brand he was legitimately trying to i always had the idea that virgil was trying to maybe emulate what flipping john takashi was doing at undercover because i feel like undercover is sort of like that it's kind of like a house or a label that has no real def defining theme that ties it all together maybe you could say futurism and sci-fi and maybe avant-garde i don't know what you could describe it but i feel like john, john takahashi gets the uh, option to just start from a blank canvas every single collection that he puts together there is no kind of theme that ties it all together maybe there is i'm not looking close enough but i think from early john takahashi from like the early scab gene collections and all this sort of stuff i used to check out back in the day in shooter magazines so stuff that he does on runways and collaboration he did with flipping you know uniqlo they're all just kind of new fresh stuff like just every season new but new stuff fresh stuff fresh fresh and for maybe virgin tried to do the same thing and it's really difficult i'd imagine to do that every single season but maybe that also was why he didn't necessarily click or resonate with fashion elites and critics and people like raf because raf it's all about themes it's all about 
you know, references. It's all about um, telling a story, all this sort of stuff. But John Takashi is just like, the story is now. Whatever I'm showing you now, that's a story. Then next season or next show, it resets. We go again. So maybe that's the reason why. I'm not being too sure, but <laughs> this quote is hilarious. Anyone in particular? Not off white. He's a sweet guy. I like him a lot, actually. But I'm inspired by people who bring something that I think has not been seen that is original. That's not always about being in new, new, because who is new is new. The funny thing he says that, because they mentioned in this art in his question, Demna and Gosha. And I'm a big fan of Demna. Everyone on this pod will probably know that I'm a Demna fanboy. And Demna flipping that Vetamon was legitimately one of the most inspiring moments I felt like of fashion for me. It made fashion exciting. It kind of touched me in every single point away, especially with all the deeply intrinsic European references, especially at a time when I was obsessed with, you know, um, Eastern European and Central European motifs and history and culture and all that malarkey. I'm you know, reading books about it, all this sort of stuff. When them that burst on the field, it kind of reminded me of old Margella. It kind of restored that feeling of old Margella. It was just really fresh. And I really loved everything about it. But let's be fair. He wasn't exactly doing anything new, new, new. There was a lot of shirts, a lot of bomber jacks, a lot of hoodies, a lot of jeans, a lot of sneakers. What was Gosha doing? The same sort of thing. Maybe more sportswear, maybe more aimed towards a younger market because clearly, you know, maybe he maybe allegedly or allegedly does not, you know, <laughs> into that kind of stuff. But it's I felt like it was really personal. He said that because I don't feel like these guys were really that new. If anything, they were fresh and maybe brought a new energy. But in terms of what they're presenting, it wasn't anywhere that I felt like it was really pushing the mold, pushing the fold or pushing things forward it was kind of just a maybe a fresh approach to sportswear in one sense with gosha and maybe a fresh approach to maybe demna to, to, to maybe margella and oversized kind of exaggerate proportions when it comes to that sort of stuff so i'm wondering if having left his brand after 27 years if he knew back then in 2017 that things were going to change, he was already being pressured to do certain things he didn't want to do. Maybe he was, you know, he maybe overheard that somebody was going to overtake his label. I don't know. I don't know if that's a sake. I just, I just got a feeling there was more to it than meets the eye. But maybe, again, I'm reading too much into it and it is just like a simple affair of, you know, the brand deciding or him deciding, you know, the fashion industry is a bit tiring after a while. Also, I want to have a break. I want to enjoy my time. And of course, he's already working, you know, doing the stuff at Prada, which has been getting absolute rave reviews and they've been absolutely crushed it every show that they've been presenting so clearly um that's going pretty well so why ruin it by doing all the other stuff or why you know why why do the other stuff if you can maybe survive with the product stuff especially at this stage of his life i'm sure he can you know he's not you know hurting for money in any way shape or form still really hard regretted but it just goes to show man how difficult and how tough the fashion industry is like if a label like Raf Simmons is closing down, maybe people would say, you know, Hyder Ekman maybe for me was the warning sign that things in fashion aren't all flipping rosy, how they make it seem to be. Because I thought Hyder Ekman's designs, although they were maybe a little bit challenging, maybe quote unquote, you'd say to the conventional consumer, which I don't think they were, because I don't think Hyder Ekman was presenting anything that was anywhere you know near it wasn't as it wasn't challenging as maybe a peter doe what he's doing now in terms of maybe it's stuff that maybe the general public wouldn't be too eager to jump on in terms of men's clothing because it kind of pushes the envelope um into a blurs a line between you know different kind of you know ways of presenting in terms of sexuality wise and whatnot but i feel like when it comes to Heide Aikerman, he was doing maybe the similar sort of stuff that what, you know, Heidi Slamane was doing at St. Laurent, maybe what he's doing now at Celine. So when Heide Aikerman ended up closing down, then it fell out to me, oh, that's a big sign. Something's happening in this industry. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes because I'm not really deep into it like that. I'm just a fan from the outside, but it seems like to run a business, it's really difficult, especially, you know, post-pandemic, during the pandemic, it must be really hard and, you know, and then now you've got Raf Simmons, who I felt like another one also, who kind of makes stuff that the regular person could is easily be into. You can easily see somebody with some disposable income just strolling into Selfridges or anywhere in West London and stumbling across a really nice Raf Simmons overcoat and be like, oh, this is nice, not knowing who the designer is. And it fits amazing. It's great material. It sort of just sits right. It makes you feel powerful and really kind of cool and hot and sex, whatever it may be. And now suddenly he's closing. So... I don't know. It shows, man, because I think Rassim was maybe the last sort of designer that exists in nowadays who's got the brand appeal or the appeal of the normies and the appeal of, you know, he's kind of got the overground, underground, as Virgil Abloh would say. And now he's having to shut down his brand. It shows that, you know, the industry is cutthroat, man. It's not easy out there. It really isn't easy. But anyway, he'll be fine. He's still got Prada. Prada's doing pretty well. The archive pizza is going to live on until, you know, 
forever and ever and ever. I see stuff still going for like in the thousands when it comes to old Rav Simmons. Um, you know, you got Lucas Sabat recently. He was stunting wearing some old archive Rav that looked incredible. Incredible, incredible. I actually put a picture up on that as well so you can see what that looked like. He was absolutely stunning and making that look amazing. And he's a really good flag bearer for that. The Ian Connor guy, he's also somebody that kind of stunts a lot on that old old flipping Ralph Simmons and makes that look so competing. So if all those guys are out there still pushing, you know, the legacy and the flipping um, archive of Raf and there's archivists that exist obviously that are selling old pieces to celebrities and whatnot and that's still got a bit of cachet behind it I think sure it'd be okay recently I saw a picture of flipping what's his face of um Drake taking a picture inside his you know massive walking wardrobe that looks like my whole entire apartment and if I'm not mistaken he was wearing a Raf Simmons riot bomber as a layering piece over another jacket like he was just wearing it just one like you know what he used to do back in the day you wear like a bomber you know underneath a massive maybe like an overcoat or something that's what he was doing with a flipping riot bomber jacket which at last showing i remember seeing going for like a hundred thousand on grail or something and maybe it's kind of sad maybe 50 grand but it's a 50 grand hoodie that he's wearing as a flipping carhartt thermal you just imagine so clearly the appeal of raf simmons is going to live on and on so you know, it, maybe he might end his brand, but his influence will still live on forever. So big up Raph Simmons, and I'm eager to see what he does going forward. Also, I'm eager to see what he does going forward also.